Hey guys, Dr. Shook here. Hope you're doing well today. Um, but what I wanted to uh, really share with you guys today is the importance of um, doing things in your day-to-day -day routine that has a very profound impact on the expression of your genes. And one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is something that you can do that if you do consistently has the ability to impact the expression of 7,000 genes. That's a huge amount of, of uh, a huge influence on your genetic expression. We know that a lot of the things that are contributing to autoimmunity and to thyroid dysfunction and a lot of the problems that we have day in and day out, uh, a lot of us suffer with anyway, is, is controlled by the expression of our genes. So if you can change things that you do day to day that, that will uh, influence or turn the expression of the genes up or down, then we can have a really profound impact on our, on our overall health and function. So what I want to share with you guys is, um, you might not know this, but I am, I'm currently um, in a 16-week genomics training program. And this is something that I've done some studying in uh, previously. I've gone through other training programs, but this is the most in-depth program by far. And one of the things that we discussed um, in one of our recent classes was the influence of chronic exercise. Okay, that may sound like a bad thing, right? Like chronic exercise. But exercising for at least six months, it, it changed the expression of 7,000 genes. And this is, this is a huge, huge thing, guys. If, if, you, didn't, if you don't know, you know, really the impact, um, the, uh, the impact that, that dietary and that lifestyle, this is in particular a lifestyle factor, can have upon your health and even autoimmunity, it's something that you've really got to take notice of because a lot of times people are looking for, they're looking for the, the answer that's going to be a diet or a supplement use or, or follow that's going to be you know, the, the, the magical fix. And really, you have to take an overall more comprehensive and, you know, for lack of a better term, a very overused term, a more holistic approach. So you have to look at um, one of my, um, my mentors and teachers, he says a biospherical approach, which makes a lot of sense when you think of it in the terms of what is a biospherical approach? Well, it's the environment in which you live in. It's, it's your stress, it's your sleep, it's your movement, it's your diet, it's, um, it's all of these things that, that influence the expression of your genes. And that result in you, you know, having or not having health problems. You know, these the, the issues with autoimmunity, guys, is that there are a lot of different factors that drive it. Uh, and this is debatable, but the easiest thing is probably dietary changes, right? Just just the food that you eat, and then beyond that, you know, lifestyle changes, like making sure that you're moving, making like that you're exercising, making sure that you're moving to some degree. Now, that's going to be different for everyone. Some people are going to be like, some people can't exercise and can't move. Other people you know, are, are high level athletes and yet they have autoimmunity. Um, so, but movement's really, really important. It changes the expression of 7,000 genes. Uh, beyond that, even, you know, we're looking at things like sleep. So how important is sleep? I mean, it's, it's profound. How many genes are affected by sleep? 3,000 genes. 3,000 genes are affected by sleep. If you, if you lack sleep, and you know what, the interesting thing is that a lot of these genes that, that seem to be uh, turned, you know, upregulated or downregulated, uh, when you don't get enough sleep, it, it tends to, um, you ha tend to have more activation and promotion of inflammatory pathways, okay? Inflammatory pathways. Does that sound good? It's not good. When you have adequate sleep, it looks like the expression of the genes is uh, more of a, of a, a less inflammatory pathways, or, or it's a down regulation of the inflammatory pathways, I should say. But 3,000 genes are changed by sleep alone. So some of these things that we you know, that we don't consider as much, uh, that we're not thinking about, actually have a very, very profound impact on, on our function. So, you know, in addition to doing things like changing your diet, using uh, temporary supplementation, you know, sleep and movement are critical. And sometimes they're overlooked. You know, sometimes they're overlooked. And, you know, I know that we all have different, different circumstances around uh, our, our limitations. Some of us have more limitations uh, around movement and exercise. Uh, but that's something that I want to share with you guys because it has such a profound impact on the expression of your genes. Now, you know, my approach to this is to try to work with people to be as specific as possible. So, you know, my approach is detect problems with advanced testing, remove and, and, uh, and adjust our diet, our lifestyle, and uh, remove infections if, if present, remove chemicals and toxins if present, 
and then once we've done that, repair. So detect, remove, repair. You know, really, it's it's my experience after working with you know, um, working with and consulting with thousands of people that if you're not looking at the specific and you're not trying to identify the specific drivers of your of your problem, it can be really challenging. It can be really challenging to improve your health. So, uh, you know, I just want to share some of those concepts with you guys because I think you know anything that I can give you guys, even if it's a small step in the right direction, is is important because it could be the the one thing for you that makes that makes the biggest difference. Um, I'm getting ready, as you guys can tell, I'm at home. I'm on uh, lunch right now. I'm getting ready to, to work out. I just want to share this with you guys. I was sitting here writing in my uh, workout journal, which is paper. Um, that, there's, there's a lot of... I, I like to write. I like to write. I like to use pen and paper. Um, you know, we use a lot of technology in, in our office, and I think it's beneficial. It's a great way to track if you put everything in the spreadsheet. But um, I really like a pen and paper. Um, I like. I think it's. Uh, I, we know it's. It's. It's more beneficial for your brain to write. If there are problems with sleep, guys, there there are a lot of a lot of things that you have to consider. I mean, it's it's really hard to go through like in a live stream everything that you have to consider. I mean, really, the way that you have the best opportunity and chance to get to uh, sleep problems is to go through a, a detailed history with someone. So if you're, if they're telling you, hey, I can't sleep, well, then you start digging and trying to figure out as many things as you can that might be contributing to problems with sleep. The most common things that I see cannot sleep and cannot, cannot they can't get to sleep or they can't stay asleep is because of blood sugar. If I had to say one thing, it's going to be blood sugar. Uh, that's just because low blood sugar um, causes problems um, where basically your brain has to recruit the production of stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, to raise blood sugar levels. So if your blood sugar is low and tends to be low at night or drops and gets low, then your brain has to activate these stress hormones, the production of stress hormones, which which actually um, causes a lot of problems with staying asleep. It spikes cortisol and spikes adrenaline. And you can just imagine, if your adrenaline is is high, you're not going to be able to sleep because adrenaline's energizing, right? So you know, just stabilizing blood sugar is is one of the most important things for sleep by by far. Um, if your blood sugar tends to be too high, like you have high, typically you'll see high blood sugar, people will have high cortisol, higher adrenaline levels. Those people will typically have a harder time getting to sleep, but once they're asleep, they can, they tend to stay asleep okay. Um, so those are, those are some of the factors that we'll see. Um, other things can be thyroid hormone activity. Um, if you're actually um, have too much thyroid hormone or if you're, you're, you're autoimmune, you have, um, let's say Hashimoto's for example, you you can have a tendency to have dumping of thyroid hormone um, up, upon an attack of your thyroid by your immune system. So the immune system attacks the gland, it destroys some of the tissue, you spill hormone into the bloodstream, and that spikes your 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 uh, thyroid hormone levels for you know typically days. And you can have hyper symptoms, and that can cause difficulty going to sleep. Uh, those are probably the most common. Though is still probably going to be blood sugar, uh, just just as far as uh, sleep goes. Some things that can help people, you know, that we've seen help people is obviously if you're, if you're autoimmune, the most important thing is to try to dampen the autoimmune process. So look at the things that are driving the autoimmunity. So, you know, my approach is detect, remove, and then and then repair. So detect the problems, remove the problems, really simplified here, and then repair the damage that's, that's occurred. So if you're trying to do things to help yourself without, you know, guidance, then uh, in a lot of cases, starting with diet is a great place to begin and some lifestyle changes and using some temporary nutritional supplementation that's more specific to your needs. Okay, that's usually a good a good place for people to start. And um, those addressing the autoimmunity tends to have it, it tends to have benefits that um, are much more far reaching to your body chemistry than just the autoimmune process. So you see people have better metabolism, better digestive function, uh, better better uh, mental focus, less brain fog, they sleep better. You know, all those things are are side effects of of changing your diet and lifestyle in a lot of cases um, you know we it's you know generic recommendations only go so far they help a lot of people but there are a lot of people that you know we see people that will eat um, autoimmune or they'll eat paleo diets and when we do food sensitivity testing they're reacting to all kinds of foods in those diets and they you don't know because you, you know as far as a food sensitivity goes you, you don't necessarily have any symptoms of that so that's one of the reasons you may not be responding to you know, diets that are supposed to help with an autoimmune condition or with Hashimoto's or, you know, the reason that you're, you're, um, you don't seem to feel much different. Or you can even feel worse because those foods can be inflammatory. You know, the, the, the best resources 
dietary guides, everything that we possibly can to, to make it available to anyone and everyone, everyone. So we try to make this available so that every single person can have access to, you know, quite frankly, the, the best information that, that we can put together as far as diet, lifestyle, and then even the need for temporary supplementation. And we try to do it at a, in a way that actually puts the person first. You know, the, the, the trouble with a lot of healthcare now is that you have to fit into that system, right? So you have to fit into the system. You go into the hospital and you have to, you have to fit into their system. They're not really looking at you. It's kind of like you go in and you have stuff done to you. And it, and it revolves around what the hospital does and not necessarily what you need, right? I mean, and the system is, I'm not criticizing the system except to say it is what it is, right? Um, good people work within that system. They're, they're all good people, but the problem is that the system, people, they, you have to fit into their system, right? They're not looking to customize something to you, right? They're looking at you and saying, okay, this is what we have. This is what you get. And if that doesn't work, then that's all I've got for you, right? Well, the difference in like precision medicine functional medicine is that it's it revolves around trying to look at you as a person and uh, make dietary lifestyle changes and things to, that supports you and your your unique individual needs. So what we've tried to do, especially in my office, is put together tools for you guys that allows you to get access to that type of thought process, that type of uh, framework for helping you from diet, lifestyle, and, and nutritional supplementation at, a, at really at a cost that is in a way that saves you money, that puts you first, right? Because what we're trying to do is give every single person access to the dietary approaches, to the lifestyle approaches that we recommend, that, that many people have to pay thousands of dollars to get access to. If you, listen, that, help, that can help a lot of people, but the, the real issue becomes when you need to have advanced testing, right? Like you, you need to have advanced testing. It, you know, if you have the resources available to do so, then there's no substitute for, for getting, you know, immunologic, you know, immune-based testing for, for food sensitivities, for uh, pathogens, whether they be bacterial, fungal, viral, uh, parasitic, you know, to see if these things are driving an immune response, to get, to get immune-based testing for environmental chemicals that your immune system's reacting to. And there's no substitute for that. But, if you have the means to do so, then that's what you need to you need to have done to best detect the problems that that are most likely to promote your autoimmunity. And um, because you have, there's a significant investment in money, and and not everyone has that as an option. And, you know, I think I've told you guys my story before, but I I would not have had that option. You know, my my personal issues when I was at six, ADHD. When uh, I was about 12 or 13, uh, significant IBS that caused IBS with constipation that lasted for years and years. Uh, when I was about 25, psoriasis, uh, 34, autoimmunity against my thyroid. I have lived through a lot of the things that you guys have lived through. I did not come from, you know, my family was um, hosiery, worked, my dad worked in furniture, my mom worked in hosiery. And I, I didn't, you know, the technology and the science was even around then. Um, my parents would have done anything to help me, but the fact is, is that probably couldn't have had access to a lot of the tools, right? To a lot of the things that I do with people today when I work one-on-one -on -one with them. But, you know, I have never, I, I never want people to not be able to get help. Like that's, that's like, I think the, one of the greatest tragedies is to like not be able to help people that truly want help. We're trying to give you guys access to cutting edge functional medicine and precision medicine, dietary plan, a dietary plan, multiple dietary plans actually, um, lifestyle changes, and nutritional supplementation that that is really designed to try to walk you guys through this process of, of helping yourself. So we're trying, I, I am, all the research that I'm doing, like I'm in a genomics class right now, I'm constantly reading, I'm constantly studying, we're trying to put all that information into a format that you guys can take and help yourself. So that if, so, so that if, you know, if you're, if you have, you know, family, or you have children, that are suffering with problems, you can take this information. You can take the information from our programs and you can help yourself and your family. Like, see, I would have never had access to that. I never had access to that. And so we're trying to change the face of functional medicine and of healthcare to put the power back into you guys' hand and to, to create a system and a framework that, that revolves around you. And we've even got it, we've got a private community of people that are they're part of that. They're all sharing and trying to help one another. My team and I try to support them. But I want to let you guys know about that. 
you know, sometimes when I start working with people, like I've started working with people when I work with uh, folks one-on-one, -on -one, we don't even start with, with exercise, really. I mean, it's like, okay, if you can walk, then we just try to get you outside a little bit and moving, right? Like, um, it's just one step at a time, just, just walking if you can. Sometimes for the first month, we don't even, I don't even push exercise. I'm like, listen, just focus on the dietary and lifestyle changes I want you to make and focus 100% on that and just focus on you know, these core things and then a lot of times we start to see improvements in their health and function, and then we can start adding in more gentle exercise. I mean, some things that you can do in substitute of exercise could be just like breathing, like paced breathing, where you breathe in, focus on you know five minutes or ten minutes of breathing in, belly breathing five minutes for five minutes, breathing in and breathing out for five seconds in, five seconds out, five seconds in, five seconds out, and focus on this paced breathing, which really helps to control your heart rate and also your stress response. Sometimes those are great places to start in, in combination with like dietary, some dietary and lifestyle changes. Okay? If you're, especially if you're having a lot of trouble with energy production, you know, if you haven't been worked up, you might need to consider getting some further investigation done because it can be, it, it can be, sometimes it can be something that is, that is very obvious on testing. That, that, that you could make some changes or that could be supported with either you know, a temporary nutritional support that could make a big difference. So a real simple example is, is like anemia. If someone, if someone doesn't have enough red blood cells or their quantity, uh, their quantity the uh, color or the size of their red blood cells is not, is not adequate, then they can't carry oxygen. And that'll create major issues with fatigue. And a lot of different, a lot of types of anemia can be supported nutritionally very effectively. And, and so that could in itself bring energy levels back up very quickly and then that, that, can, that can be uh, something that can really assist you in getting your health back. So if like those things haven't been looked at, they have to be looked at, you know, because you might be suffering, you know, and I hate to say, I don't want to say needlessly, but you're suffering and, and you, you may have some things that can be acted upon very quickly. So I hope that someone is helping you to assess that so that you can, you can find out, especially because, listen, if they're, if they're simple things, that can be changed to really help give you quality of life and energy back and, and help you to further improve your health. And those are just like, you know, I would say like no brainers, like things that we've got to address that cannot be missed. You know, I'm, I'm telling you guys, if you're, if you're going to your medical, your medical doctor, 99% don't have training in precision medicine, like, like functional medicine or genomics. They, they don't. And it doesn't mean that they can't help you. They're incredibly, incredibly important part of your healthcare team. And I mean, I require everyone that I work with one-on-one -on -one to have a medical doctor that they're seeing and, and that they have being managed with. Because what, what I do is complimentary. We actually, we actually need to all work together here, guys, because you, you, you need a team. You need a team that's willing to work together. And um, what I do is, is very complimentary. What they do is very complimentary to what, what I do. But you've you got to understand that, that their training is on disease. And it's typically on, it's, it's not on looking at the drivers of a lot of these problems yet. I think we'll see it, it maybe in the next 10 years or 20 years that it really gets into primary care, I hope, I hope. But with the, you know, with, with the current environment where they're trying to sequester cost as much as they can, what, what they're actually doing by trying to sequester cost is they're, they're, they're sequestering initial costs with testing by not, by not letting you get food sensitivities and some of these more expanded tests done under an insurance plan, but they're causing a ballooning uh, and an increase in costs on the back end. So as the disease, so they, they don't let you work up a lot of the drivers of disease processes, and there's a lot of factors behind this. It's not that the insurance companies are bad, it's not that the doctors are bad, it's that the system is set up the way that it is to sequester costs. So they're not gonna let you do a lot of testing up front if they don't determine it to be medically necessary. Now this is a whole topic we could get into of me explaining that. But so they, they, they limit the amount of testing you get up front, which really what, what I believe and what I, I, I know to be a fact because we see it, we see it in practice, you're gonna have bigger problems on the back end. You're gonna have, so for example, diabetes, right? This is, let me just use diabetes as an example. Um, diabetes, type two diabetes, a lot of people that have type two diabetes, what do you do? You go in and say, oh, your blood sugar's bad, you gotta eat better and you gotta, you've gotta, um, you gotta exercise more, right? Well, a lot of the foods that they recommend to most of these people that are diabetic are actually inflammatory. They can actually create more problems with their blood sugar regulation. They're not looking at things like cortisol, right? So there's chemical stress, which can be inflammation. There is, there's physical pain, and then there's emotional stress. It all produces an increase in cortisol, your stress hormone cortisol. Do you know that cortisol 
is diabetogenic. It promotes and causes diabetes because it stimulates the increase of blood sugar. So when you go in, they're just saying, hey, diet and exercise. No one's looking at the cortisol levels. No one's looking at inflammatory levels. No one's checking to see if you have type 1.5 diabetes, which about, guys, uh, it's either 10 or 20%. Um, I think it's 10% of people that have type 2 diabetes, okay? So you've been labeled as type 2 diabetic, right? Which is a ton of people around the world in the U.S. 10%, 1 in 10 of those people have type 1.5 diabetes, which means they have an adult onset, it's called adult uh, latent adult onset um, diabetes. They have autoimmunity against their pancreas. That's right, they have an autoimmune condition that's dis destroying their pancreas, that's promoting an inability to regulate blood sugar, causing high blood sugar, that looks like type 2 diabetes because it on it's an onset of adulthood, which they don't expect to see it. They expect to see type 1 diabetes in, in young children, right? But so when you see this, and it, this is just a prime example. So now, so so you have these people that are saying, "Hey, eat right," uh, and they give you a diet that's high in grains because it's slow, it's complex carbs. And guess what? A lot of those, a lot of those type 1.5 diabetics, the people that have the adult onset diabetes that's autoimmune, those people, a lot of those grains are highly inflammatory and promote the autoimmune process. It can make them worse. Make them worse. So here's the thing. More testing up front would help us to get more clarity and more specificity as to what you need as an individual. Not some, you know, not not let's let's just let's just minimize the upfront cost. I, I get it. And um I understand the the rationale behind it, but I think it's um you know it's stepping over a dollar to pick up a penny, so to speak. So guys, you gotta realize that right now, in today's environment, you have to be willing to spend money today to try to help you, to help figure out what is going on with you as an individual. You, you, you're going to have to be the one that does it today. And I'm not saying, I'm just telling you that that's the environment that, we, that we're that we in right now as far as a healthcare environment. No insurance company is going to pay for further investigation into your problems until it becomes a, a diagnosable disease that's more progressed. And then a lot of times the, the, the treatment is really focused on just managing the symptoms and trying to, to, to delay further progression of the problem. In today's environment, you have to be willing to pay the money today to investigate and figure out what's going on. And I tell this because it's the truth, guys. You either, I, I know you don't want to, to spend money to figure out how to, how to, you know, what's making you feel bad if you have insurance. You feel like the insurance should do that. I get it, but that's just not the environment that we're in today. Um, hopefully that will come, but, but you either pay it now or you pay it later, guys. You, you, you're, you're going to be spending money on chronic disease. Do you know the average diabetic, how much money it costs for, for the lifetime of a, of a diabetic in our current healthcare system? $500,000. And you know why? Because think about this. Advanced diabetes leads to diabetic retinopathy, so loss of eyesight, um, peripheral neuropathy, incredible pain in hands and feet. It leads to um, it leads to all kinds of, of vascular issues where they have to they, they might have to have amputations. So you can either invest in your health early on and try to get healthy, or you can wait until the future and, and have a lot more potential risk. Here's the deal: like that that is, you know, if someone has fluctuations in their thyroid, I mean, I would be looking at I would be checking number one. I'd be checking for antibodies for autoimmunity. 90% of people that have thyroid problems have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid condition that can cause high and low thyroid symptoms, but it typically results in low thyroid hormone output and hypothyroidism. 90%, so 9 out of every 10 people is estimated that, that they have thyroid-related symptoms because of Hashimoto's, an autoimmune attack against the gland. So with your up and down, it's, it, it sounds like, you know, from a history perspective, in similar cases, that's what I found. And you have to address the drivers of the autoimmune process to have the best idea of what's actually going on with the gland and, and its ability to have normal output or not of thyroid hormone. So you've got to address the things that are driving the autoimmune process. So typically reactivity to partially digested food proteins, reactivity to pathogens, which are bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungal infections. Um, those are all very common. And the third category, environmental chemical reactivity. Now, you've also got to look at foundational health. Um, so you've got to look at a lot of blood work, and you need to look at hormones. 
because, and even your gut, because these things are all connected with autoimmunity. Now, just in your case though, you, if that's all you know is that thyroid's up and down, then that's not going deep enough, at least from my perspective. Uh, there's not enough answers there. And so, you, you know, also if you're getting hyper signs, man, you really have to be checked for Graves. Graves disease um, or any type of hyperthyroid condition is, 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 a, is, a, is a condition that has to be managed medically. Like you have to have a doctor that looks at that and says, okay, if you've got hyperthyroidism, then they need to be like watching that very closely because hyperthyroidism can lead to things like strokes and heart attacks because the heart can, can, can beat so fast and so rapidly due to overproduction of thyroid hormone for, for various reasons, but it can be autoimmune, which is called Graves, then, then you can, you can, you know, it can be life-threatening. So you got to be very careful there. So your doctors need to work that up more thoroughly. You know, whenever I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, we go in depth and, and we go deep in investigating what is happening. We survey and cast a very wide net. So I appreciate you guys. I wish I could hang out and talk more. I know there's a ton more comments here. I would love to answer. I will look and see what I can do. But I got really, if I were to do anything today, I would have just made a trip home to do a Facebook Live video. I got But I got to bust out my workout and uh, get back to it. So hope you guys have a great day. Listen, if you need help, let us know. Message us. We will do everything we can to help you. Um, if you need help and you're, you want someone to help you dig to figure out what's going on, I work with people around the world. We work via phone, Skype, FaceTime, and I help people dig by looking at um, getting advanced testing for them and really trying to help them figure out a plan that's specific and precise to their needs to give them the best chance to get better. But anyway, if you need help or anything, just reach out to us. We will do everything we can to help you. I appreciate you guys. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you for hanging out with me while I ramble. But I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks. Hey guys, Dr. Shook, thank you for viewing our videos. I hope they help you out. If you want to, just subscribe to our channel somewhere here. You can watch a video um, that YouTube's actually selected for you, so hopefully it'll help you out. If you need any other information or resources, just look in the description. We've got links to our website, to our nine lab test guidebook, and everything else that we do. I really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great day.